Hi. So reading or literacy in general is truly really fantastic. It is at the basis of our human modern societies. This is because it has enabled us, humans, to share knowledge and propagate it far beyond what was possible on the basis of oral language only. Reading is also a tremendous means to share emotions and bring the mind beyond what the body can reach and experience. But is reading so great to everyone? Well, probably not. Reading is actually the worst nightmares of individuals with dyslexia. Dyslexia is a specific reading disorder in which individuals have difficulties acquiring reading despite normal intelligence. Dyslexia can have dreadful consequences because it can lead to school failure and reduce self-esteem. About one individual in 10 has dyslexia, and this proportion is about the same across the planet. Most of the time, dyslexia rules in a phonological disorder. That means that individuals with dyslexia have difficulties identifying and manipulating the sounds of their own language. It may be a bit puzzling why dyslexia is not just about vision, but a good knowledge of the sounds of one's language is needed, because without that knowledge, it's impossible to associate sounds with letters. In other words, we cannot read a word if we are confused with its pronunciation, and this confusion can lead to dyslexia. Recent developments, technological developments, have made it possible to look for traces of dyslexia directly in the brain. These techniques can give us pictures of the brain and tell us how the brain reacts to sounds, pictures, and makes us move. Some of these techniques, like electroencephalography and magnetoencephalography, even provide a detailed information about the timing of brain activity, millisecond by millisecond. This technique works about on the same principle as the electrocardiogram. The electrocardiogram measures the electrical currents generated by the heartbeats, and electroencephalography and magnetoencephalography measure the neuronal currents generated by the cells in the brain, the neurons. Thanks to these techniques, we now know that there are differences between individuals with and without dyslexia in the brain structures responsible for processing sounds. And when reading, individuals with dyslexia activate less their brain regions responsible for processing sounds and memory. These techniques have also shed light on the phonological disorder in dyslexia. When listening to sounds, speech, our brain constantly tracks the different fluctuations of the speech at different time scales, corresponding to syllables, words, phrases, and sentences. And this tracking is thought to be central to understand speech. Interestingly, this tracking is not that accurate in individuals with dyslexia, especially in brain areas responsible for processing sound and making sense of it. And also, these two brain areas communicate less well with each other in dyslexia. In the past decades, there has been an increase in the awareness of what dyslexia is. And thanks to that, it is detected earlier and earlier and treated with more and more efficient techniques of speech therapy. Speech therapists, because they know that dyslexia often roots in a phonological disorder, will often play games with children aiming at improving their phonological awareness. For example, they will help them identify rhymes, such as cat and bat, or detect words that start with the same letter, like cat and corn. But dyslexia is not just a problem with reading, it's a bit more general than that. For example, individuals with dyslexia have difficulties perceiving rhythm. They are not that good at tapping to a beat. They also have a general difficulty perceiving speech when there is noise. The research community has recently identified a very simple means to train all the skills that are needed to acquire reading. And this is simply playing music. Music has many beneficial effects on the brain and on behavior in general. 
For example, listening to music can decrease stress level and improve concentration. At the level of the brain, music practitioners, the brain of music practitioners process better sounds. It also, the two hemispheres of the brain talk better to each other. In a study conducted by Nina Cross in the US, children living in unfavorable conditions engaged in a musical training uh, program. After two years, when they came back to the lab, the researchers noticed that their brain activity, the quality of their brain activity in response to simple speech sounds such as ga and ba, did improve. So this means that musical training can improve phonological processing. And these are the skills that are really weak in dyslexia and could be and would benefit from improving. The same two-year musical training also improved the ability of children to discriminate speech in noise. Results by my group have extended these findings. Basically, in 30 children who came to our lab at age six and seven, and one year later, we found that the ability of the brain to track speech in noise improved more in individuals who had practiced music than in those who didn't practice music in the past year. It is a bit puzzling also why playing music and practicing music can improve speech perception in noise. But music practitioners are likely to have experience playing in ensembles and thereby they will train their ability to focus on the different elements of the sounds. A recent study has corroborated this uh, hypothesis. In individuals, young adults, who had variable, various experience playing music, the researchers saw that the brain just represented all the elements of the sound, especially in those who had more experience with music. So this means that musical training has long-lasting effect on the way brain represents a speech in noise. But is there a limit to how early musical training is beneficial for children? Well, probably not. In nine-month-old infant, it has been demonstrated that listening to music and having a musical training even change the way the brain responds to speech sounds. And it's generally accepted that Playing music gives the best effect when it started before age seven. In general, musical training has only positive effects on the brain and can improve phonological awareness, which is so needed for children with dyslexia. And because of that, musical training is now recognized as a complementary mean to help children with dyslexia. The message for parents and future parents is simple. Dyslex uh, musical training does only some good to children's brain and may help them thrive at school. So don't hesitate to offer them the music advantage. Thank you.